Yeah, and as we want God, um, he shows up in his word. So today's scripture reading is John chapter 8, verses 39 through 47. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works your father did. They said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Is that on now? Ah, it helps if you turn it on. Let me just get my timer set here. Good afternoon, depending on when you're hearing this, either afternoon or morning, but I appreciate you being here. Uh, in my clock set here. I remember preaching in Augusta, Maine, one time to one of my one of my friends' churches, uh, and he gave me the pastoral kind of pastoral humor. He said, "Marcus," I said, "How long do I have, Justin?" He said, "Marcus, you can preach as long as you want, but the people leave at 11. <laughs> right? So my timer's going. Uh, glad to be here. This is. This is, I think, the first time I've preached to a room full of people in almost a year, which is, which is great. Great. Amen. It's just great. I love meeting you. I've met a few of you in the past couple of weeks, coffees, lunches, and I'm looking forward to meeting most, most if not all of you, in the next hopefully six, eight, ten months. Uh, a couple of things here. Uh, we're obviously in a season of just great trial uh, transition. Uh, also, a lot of grief. Um, if you have an opportunity, uh, I'm only five minutes in, I'm about to cry. Um, if you have a minute this week, 20, take the time um, and email Dave. Um, let him know that you're praying for him. Pray for him. Email him that you prayed for him. Uh, his family, the kids. Uh, obviously in a rough season at uh, this time. Grief is a difficult thing, very difficult thing. Pray for our pastor, our leader, Dave. So we had a little winter come through here. <laughs> Amen for that. Amen. I, I, I love it. We woke up this morning, we're like, oh, we got to go. You know, we're from Colorado. Oh, we got to go see the snow. You know, we're driving over there trying to find a little patch of, a little something, right? We found a little something, took some pictures. It was really good. Uh, I always remind you before I start uh, going into God's word that James 3, James, the book of James, chapter 3, verse 1 says, not many people should strive to be teachers because teachers of the world, teachers of the word of God will be judged more strictly. So when I stand before you, what I'm going to do, I will be judged more strictly for. And so I take that very seriously in my preparation and listen to the Holy Spirit during the week before I come out. So you're not hearing my opinions. You're not hearing if humor comes out. You can ask my family. I'm not the most humorous person in the world. It's completely by accident. Um, I, I don't have a sense of humor that I, I'm keenly aware of, if you know what I mean. Let's open up in a word of prayer, and we'll get started here. Father God, I thank you for these people here this, this morning, afternoon, Lord. I just pray that your spirit will go forth. Uh, the word of God we preach through me, Lord. May you use me as an instrument uh, to speak truth, uh, to encourage, to challenge to affirm uh, things that are here and to call out prophetically things that are, 
that you see that we do not see as people. Lord, give me courage to speak truth and give me strength to finish the word of God this day. I thank you, Lord, for your presence here. I thank you for where we are in the city. Thank you for where we are in the country. And we tune in for the next 30 or so minutes as we, as we listen to God's word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm sitting in a sweltering heat of Liberia, West Africa, in a little town that I grew up. Our town is kind of a, even a, a big word to use for where I grew up. Village, uh, suburb, whatever you want to call it, a little place on West Africa, sitting in a sweltering heat, 2010, July. And I wanted to go to church, so my sister said, there's a church across the street from where we grew up, so can you, you want to go there, you feel free to go to that church. And I walked into the place, and what we, in the West would hardly call a church, because the walls were just about halfway up, and there was open, kind of open windows, the wind's coming in, we're sitting on plastic chairs, and it is hot. I remember it being hot when I was a kid, but when I went back, oh, wow, how did I grow up here, right? It was hot, and I'm sitting there, and they're worshiping. I mean, they're singing. They're on and on. They're singing and singing and singing and singing. Just when I thought they were done, the pastor gets up, and then he starts to preach. And I, I, I looked at my watch, and it was over an hour before the pastor even stepped up to start to preach because, you know, he has to pray, and he has, you know, he's going through it. We, we're, we're Africans, right? We're going through it. And the pastor, before he starts to preach, says something. I'm sitting in the back, and everybody knows that I'm, you know, I'm not from here, even though I'm from here, right? It's been 20 years. And the pastor says, I'm going to preach. If you don't have a Bible or you cannot read, move next to somebody who has a Bible. Two-thirds of the people got up and moved next to someone who had a Bible. Two-thirds of that church, full of people, moved. I walked away thinking, what am I going to take from this service? I understood the sermon. It, it blessed my heart. But I asked myself two questions. How many of these people here are hearing the word of God for the first time? The second question I asked myself, how many of these people here are hearing the word of God for the last time? I take that, I share that story with you because when you sit here today, maybe you've heard a thousand sermons, 500 sermons, I want you to keep that in mind. What would be different in my life if this was the first sermon I ever heard? What would be different if this was the last sermon I ever heard? If you're with me, I appreciate dialogue, so feel free to give me an amen, give me a shuffle, give me something, amen. If you have your Bibles... Uh, Sarah, thank you for reading that. Uh, we're in John chapter 8, verses 39 through 47. Thank you for reading that. We're going to engage this word with good fervor. I love to hear it when I hear the pages rustling. And I love to see it when our young folks are turning on their phones and going into, their, going into that app. So meet me there. Um, this passage is a continuation of the last couple of weeks as Corey, Dave, and myself have been walking through this confrontation between Jesus and the Pharisees. I like, I, I like the word Pharisees, but I really like the, word, the words religious leaders. So if you hear me use religious leaders, that's just an interchange between Pharisees and religious leaders. Because I think sometimes when we refer to them as Pharisees, they seem kind of distant. But when we say they're religious leaders, it brings it into our court. Amen? There seems to be some kind of confusion between Jesus... And the religious leaders. And Jesus is, is, in his own way, trying to correct them. Pick me up in verse 39. 39 says this. Let me find my... It says, they answered him, the Pharisees, answering Jesus says, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. So what... The question is, what did Abraham do that they are not doing? What was Abraham's life like? If this is your first time in church, your first time hearing the name Abraham, Abraham is considered the father of the faith, right? God promised Abraham that he would have, a, he, would, he would birth forth a great nation, right? Abraham was a pagan living in the city of Ur, which is current day uh, kind of Iraq or Iran. And God, God called him and he listened and he left his home, traveled hundreds of miles because just on a whim that God had called him. 
right? Abraham listened. So what are they doing? What are the Pharisees doing in that day and age that, that, Jesus, that Jesus is saying, you guys, you're not walking with Abraham. If you says you're Abraham's children, you're not doing what Abraham is, was doing, right? Abraham listened to God. Abraham walked closely with God. God promised Abraham, like I said, he would be the father of many nations, even though he didn't have a son. Though Abraham was slightly skeptical, he followed God. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, that Abraham believed and these things came through. It says, and through faith, Abraham followed what God was saying by faith, right? By faith, Abraham had one son and God told him, he said, take this son and you're going you're gonna to sacrifice him to me. And Abraham believed and he walked by faith. So when Jesus is telling them that you are not children of Abraham, what he's really saying is you are not walking with God. You are not walking by faith, right? Jesus is in their midst, sitting amongst them, and he's telling them, he's, they've heard Jesus preach. They've seen Jesus, have heard of the miracles that Jesus had done. But they're still saying, we don't believe in you. Jesus is saying, I am God, but you're not listening. Abraham listened to God. Jesus is not changing anything in the Bible, any of the teachings, but he's affirming what has always been true, right? If you were genuine disciples, Jesus is saying, if you were followers, if you were children of God, you are marked by your ability to hear the words of God, your ability to see things that align with God. The religious leaders cannot hear truth. They cannot discern. Jesus is sitting amongst them, performing all these miracles, and they're still in opposition to him. They're set in their ways. In short, they are deeply devoted to religion. Don't miss that. They are deeply devoted to religion. Jesus says, you cannot bear to hear me in verse 43. Brothers and sisters in Tucson, I want to ask you two questions today. One, one question, first of all. Can you hear? Can you hear? Americans use this idiomatic expression that I love. They say the apple. Somebody's got it. It's okay, right? The, apples, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? And when, it, when the apple falls far from the tree, that, that's saying you're completely disconnected, right? The apple in this case has fallen way far from the tree. They have lost their home training, they would say, in the black home, right? You, you, you have lost your home training. You must have lost your mind, right? They are, f- they are physically children and descendants of Abraham, but the ways and the works of Abraham are far away. Verse 41, Jesus is talking. He says, you are doing the works of your father, I'm sorry, they said, you are doing the works of your father, they said to him. We were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Some of you know this well. Some of you have siblings that you grew up with in the same house. You share the same DNA. You even share a resemblance, right? A physical resemblance, but little else. Jesus says we're we're, we're from the same tree, right? Right? I like to use the expressions, can I put my feet on your couch for a minute? Can I put my feet on your couch, if you understand? Can I explain it? Right? If someone walks into your house, if I walk into your house, you offer me dinner, and and I I just get up there and put my feet on the couch, it's kind of rude, isn't it? Right? Can I be rude with you for a minute? Can I put my feet on your couch, if you will? Right? You invited me in. I'm on your block. I'm in your house. Now I'm going to put my feet on your couch. Let's go there. Spiritually, they were far apart from Jesus. They were descendants of Abraham. They were the same people ethically, but spiritually they were far apart. We see this today in the American church. We are part of the same family. We came from the same root, but we're not bearing the same fruit. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen right now. How else do I explain people prophesying and getting things wrong? How else do I explain when I tell pastors and I sit and I sit at lunch with pastors or religious people and I say, "Hey, I 
I like to work with orphans, widows, foreigners, and the poor, and they act like I'm speaking French. Oh, I'm talking about quantum physics. Am I on your block yet? How else can I explain sitting with someone in this city who was, who was a brother who, who has left the church, and I'm saying, hey, man, I'm here in Tucson, and I'm trying to make as many connections as I can, just getting to know people so I can understand what the needs are in the city because I'm really interested in serving the poor. I'm really interested in helping orphans. I'm really interested in helping refugees. I'm really interested in helping people who are marginalized. You know what he said to me? <laughs> he said this. He said, church folks ain't going to go for that. I'm sorry, when I get excited, my grammar goes. He says, he said, he said to me, he said, Marcus, I just knew you, but are you raising your own support? Because you're about to get fired talking stuff like that. He said, no, I'm not. But I believe what Jesus believed. The marginalized. How else can I explain the state of the church today that someone would look at me when I talk about the poor and say, the church ain't going to go for that. Somebody hear me out there? We came from the same root, but we're not bearing the same fruit. The Pharisees are upset with Jesus because he's hanging out with sinners. Do you see how far they've drifted? How far the apple has rolled from the tree? The Pharisees and Jesus, believe me, they're sitting there, and let me set this scene, they're sitting in, 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 in a courtyard, and they're having this conversation, and there are people watching. They're having this argument, and there are people watching. They're having this confrontation, and there are people watching. Religious leaders and Jesus, I want to know who, who's, who do I need to be following, right? They have drifted away from the mission. And Jesus says, you are not for Jesus to say you are not children of Abraham in front of everybody to religious leaders who is verbally disinheriting them, right? And so they, they have to come back with something in verse 41. It says, we're not illegitimate children. They're saying, our father is Abraham. I'm not, I, I didn't come from another father, right? They're missing it. Let me apply this. Jesus is talking to them. He's telling them, but they cannot hear. The Bible doesn't say in that passage, it doesn't say they're unwilling to hear. He says they cannot hear. You ever talk to somebody who has their headphones in and you're talking to them, but they physically cannot hear you, right? They're not unwilling to hear, but they cannot hear you, right? Jesus is saying they cannot bear to hear me. You cannot hear, he says, because... You have, created, you have created a religion that suits you. You have created something that even God in your midst cannot recognize. You have created a religious lifestyle that is so far from God, right, that, that if Jesus himself is sitting amongst you, you cannot hear, what, what good is there? Let me ask you this, brothers and sisters. If Jesus was walking in this room right now, how would he be received? Will we recognize him? Will we be able to hear him? What if Jesus was amongst us? Let me take you back a little bit to Exodus 32, where this phrase cannot hear comes from, right? You can, you can, take, you can make a note of that and go read it tonight, right? The Israelites left Egypt. God has rescued them. They have marched through, through the Red Sea, and, 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 and they are sitting there, and they've forgotten, Right? And Abraham, uh, Abraham, Moses goes up the mountain and leaves them for a while, and they get, they, get, they get kind of skittish. And know what they do? They create a golden calf to worship, right? Here's why that is important. So what is that? Why is that important? The golden calf that they created, I need you to stay with me. The golden calf that they created, right, cannot hear. They created something that cannot hear. Throughout the Old Testament, it talks about the people having a stiff neck. That is the reference. What they've created is, is an idol that cannot hear, cannot see, and is incapable of turning. That's who they've become. They cannot hear God, they cannot see God, and they're incapable of repentance. What have we created in our lives that inhibits us from hearing? What has we created? That, that we are become incapable of repentance. 
Am I in your house? This is what the Pharisees have done. This is what the religious leaders have done. They are so far off course that when Jesus comes, God comes in flesh, they don't recognize. They actually try to kill Jesus. They're openly hostile towards God. They are religious people. These people are the leaders in religious spaces. It's at this point when I'm preaching and I get convicted, right? What am I doing in my religious practices that is in opposition to what God is doing? You ask yourself that. Am I stubbornly religious that I cannot hear? Am I so caught up in my religious duties that I am missing God staring me in the face? What is deterring you from hearing God? Can you hear? I hope you can. Can you hear? Jesus goes further with the religious leaders in verse 42. After they have asserted to say, hey, man, this is our lineage. We come from God. We're not illegitimate. Jesus says, if God were your father, you would love me because I came from God. And then he really turns it up. Man, don't, you, don't you like Jesus, man? Don't you, don't you like him? He don't care. <laughs> like they say in the street, he don't care. Sorry. He turns it up. He said, let me tell you who is your father. I'm going to tell you who is your father. Verse 44, he says this, You are of your father, the devil, and and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Somebody just got elf in their head. He is the father of lies. We can joke, but this is serious, right? Have you ever been in an argument and you're going back and forth with somebody and the person says something so strong that you both pause? Like, oh, no, you didn't go there. Oh, you did not. No, you didn't. Let me just tell you this. If you haven't used the line that Jesus just used, don't use it. Don't tell somebody they're the child of the devil. Their father is the devil, right? That will halt every argument in its full steps, right? Especially not to a religious leader. Somebody who's trained in the word. You can't tell them that. But Jesus is different. Jesus speaks truth directly to them. Right? When the occasion demands truth directly in the face of lies, he says it. This whole discourse, by the way, is going on before people. Can you imagine? I've been leading services all this time, and Jesus walks up to me in front of you guys and says, you're, you're a child of the devil? What does that do to me? What did that do to them? Their father's the devil. This is your first time coming to church. You've been longing to understand who the devil is and what he does. I'm going to take a few minutes. Who is the devil? What are the Pharisees doing that indicates to Jesus that they are following the devil? The devil is a created being who is extremely prideful. Right? He is a denier of truth. Jesus has been teaching truth his whole ministry. And the Pharisees have been rejecting him. So that tells him that they are children of the devil. In, the devil is a truth denier. He is a liar. A liar. Right? The, the, in the NIV, the, in, in that verse, the NIV, the Bible says, lying is his native tongue. Lying is his native language, right? My native language is another different kind of English, right? When you get up in the morning, when you talk, you don't even think about English. You just speak English, right? The Bible says in this, his native tongue is a lie. So when he wakes up in the morning, he ain't talking no truth. It's just lies coming out. That was a liar. It's in his character. Lies are just a norm for the devil. This is your father, he says. In this case, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. 
The devil has left an imprint on them that they cannot erase. If the devil is their father, he has left just this, 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 this streak of lies because they cannot recognize truth because they've imbibed so much lies. They've become native speakers of lies. Truth is a foreign language to them. It's unfamiliar. So when they hear Jesus talking, it's like he's speaking another language. That's why they oppose Jesus. Sadly, the devil still does things like this today amongst us right now. His main objective is to have us believe lies that lead to broken lies that lead to death. The lies that come at us just fast and furious in, in everyday life. You hear them, you see them, right? They are disguised and they're hard to discern and make it difficult for you to hear from God. Make it difficult for you to hear God. I hope you can hear. I know sometimes when I when I what when I get on social media, I try not to get on there too much, but when I get on there, what was meant for good, right, has been exchanged for something else. I'm not a social media basher because I think it's is 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 necessary, but what what happens? You go on there to, oh, I'm gonna go and encourage somebody. Next thing you know, you see somebody's life that looks better than you and you start getting some kind of way. Right? What was meant for connection has now exacerbated depression and anxiety. What was meant to, to bring families and friends together leaves people lonely. You see what I'm saying? You, you trade something for another. So why is this important? The devil was the father of lies. We have to, we, we've got to make that clear. Why is this important? After all, you say to me, Marcus, I'm not a Pharisee, and we're not living in first century Israel. Can you bring it down to me? Like I said in the beginning, if this was the first sermon you ever heard or this was the last sermon you ever heard, heard what are you walking away with today? What are you walking away from this sermon with today? Let me leave you a couple of things. To be people of God, to be people of God, we do not have to be biological descendants of Abraham. To be children of God, we do not have to be, like the Pharisees at one point were insisting, you do not have to be descendants of God. If you need proof of this, please read Acts 15. Right? You can be born in China to an atheist family or a Buddhist family, right, and become a Christian because the universality of the truth of Jesus Christ is true on every continent. Sometimes people look at me and said, how, how are you an African, but you, 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 you're a Christian? Can I go there? The truth of Jesus Christ is not only true here, it's true back there. You hear what I'm saying? It's true everywhere. That's truth. Okay. You can be born in the slums of Nairobi or in the suburbs of Los Angeles. The truth remains the same. There is one way to God and it's through Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen? The message is always the same. It is not about national identity. It is not about tribal lineage. It does not automatically, all those things does not automatically stop you or grant you access to God. Right? Belief. Can you hear? The Bible says faith comes from hearing. Are you guys picking it up? Yeah. To become a child of God, you must be a believer in Jesus Christ. It is the only way. It is the only way. That is true in Tucson. It is true in Bardenesville, Liberia. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, that, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of God. Can you hear today? Are you hearing? Are there things in your life that inhibit you from hearing? Can I stop for a minute? Some of us are in relationships that stop us from hearing God. Uh-oh. Some of us have developed habits that have stopped us, from, stopped us from hearing God. Some of us have put things in place that inhibit us from hearing God. Some of us have created golden calves. We don't call them that. But they inhibit us from hearing from God. 
It, it, it makes us so hard-hearted that if God were to walk in, we wouldn't recognize him. Do you have an ear to hear Jesus' truth, right? Jesus' truth, by the way, is not, is not reserved for folks who have the longest religious resumes like the Pharisees did. You don't have to be educated. You don't have to be a seminarian. You don't have to have a PhD in, in Greek or Hebrew or biblical studies to, to, to be closer to God. People like me who fill their calendars with religious activity have the hardest time. People like us who are in campus ministry or in, in, in pastoral ministry, right, have the most difficult time relating to God. I remember at one point in seminary, one morning, <laughs> this is, oh man, I didn't plan on saying this one, but I'm going to say it. Uh, I had to study for a test. And my devotion time needed to happen as well. And for a minute, I thought, I can pass on this and, and do this. Ooh, that's how it starts. I, I can I can I can study for this test and I can I can get I'm still studying the Bible. I try to tell myself I'm still studying the Bible, right? We still in seminary, right? We still I'm still gonna be reading the Bible. No, you not. No, you are not doing that. No matter what happens, you need to make space to hear from God always. One of the devil's greatest lies for us church going people is religious activity. But I'm doing this but I'm doing this for the church, but I'm doing that for the church, right? In the, midst of our, in the midst of our activity, please do not make an idol out of something that stops you from hearing God. Religious activity, doing things for God gets the best of us sometimes, I know. There are some months and days, let me take that back because this is a serious. There's very rarely nowadays that a month goes by in my life that I do not open up the news, not the news, open up my screen and read about some Christian leader. Do I need to finish that sentence? There's some Christian leader that we all know, some Christian speaker that I've seen at a conference, that I'm like, man, that guy is really doing it. And he's falling away from the Lord. Religious activity. I'll tell you what, though. That's when his life really begins, is when you have a public fall like that. That's when repentance starts, right? That's when humility starts. Doing religious words, but don't miss Jesus, please. As you leave today, I don't want you to leave. As you turn off this video this morning, I don't want you to leave your thinking. Glad I'm not a Pharisee. No. I don't want you to leave here thinking that, that I'm glad I'm not a Pharisee. I don't want you to leave here thinking, and I can do better. I don't want you to leave here thinking that I'm better than this person. Oh, I'm better than that. I'm not involved in religious activities. So I'm not even involved. I just come, I come to church and I read my Bible, right? I want you to leave here thinking, leave here with these words. I have the ability to hear from Jesus clearly. There is nothing hindering my, my hearing, my seeing God more clearly, right? I want you to leave your thinking, Jesus Christ is enough. Jesus Christ is enough. If he were to walk into my life, I would recognize him. Because verse 47, as this passage closes, says this, whoever is of God Here's the words of God. The reason why, this is Jesus talking, he says, the reason why you don't hear them is that you are not of God. If you want to be of God, ladies and gentlemen, you have to open your ears to hear. You have to clear, clear your vision, clear the pathway so that you can hear what Jesus is saying to you. The religious people created a life that was around religion, but it wasn't. It, it wasn't, it was something they created. Ladies and gentlemen, it is always sad when people sit in church all their life and they miss Jesus. Remember in seminary hearing a story of, of a pastor who had been a pastor for 
so many years. He went to another church and heard the gospel and got saved. <laughs> he had been a pastor for years. And he, and he was so humble that he, when he heard the gospel, he came back to his church and told him, hey, I just got saved. <laughs> Can you imagine? Well, well, <laughs> oh, man. Lord, don't let your life be filled with religious activity and you miss Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your word. I pray that as we, as, we, as we listened, as we interacted, Lord, I pray that your spirit was moving in the hearts of people in this room and, and on the screens, Lord. I pray that you are doing the work in hearts. I pray that we're able to see and hear you more clearly. Lord, I pray that as people who are churchgoers, we recognize that church going doesn't save us. Only you can. God, I, we humble ourselves before you and pray that you will move in a mighty way in lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.